Hey guys, so today I wanted to talk about a mentality that I noticed seems to be common ground with a lot of hams. And that is that if something's broken, you fix it. Now, this has been part of ham culture for a long time, but it seems like it's really not a part of modern day society. I mean, look around you. You'll notice that electronics are increasingly being designed so that they can't be taken apart by the average consumer. Now, there's lots of reasons for this, but it seems like people really just don't care. I mean, there's a few exceptions, like the make movement. They're pretty cool because they're pushing people to really create things and build things and take things apart for the intention of fixing it or even just learning more about it. But overall, society really lacks in this mentality, but it's something that hams seem to really have right. Now, this is something that I think that we should really acknowledge and appreciate and really foster in the ham community. So I know I can't make a video about taking things apart without actually taking something apart. So let's go do a simple repair on my ICOM IC730. So my speaker is broken, so I've decided that I need to replace it. I posted on QRZ looking for a speaker for my radio, and somebody was really awesome and just sent me one completely free. So we're going to use that to replace it. So it looks like in here we've got some packaging, and then we've got the radio. And it looks like it's the exact one that we need. Here's my radio. I took the liberty of taking out all of the screws. So this is the inside. And here's the connector that we're going to connect the speaker to. This is the lid of the radio and where the speaker is going to be mounted. To be perfectly honest, I've tried to do this repair before. So this is not the original speaker that broke. You can tell this isn't the original speaker for two reasons. On one hand, the connector is thinner than on the original. Also, if you flip it over, you'll see that the base on the new one is thicker and therefore did not fit in the case. So we're just going to take out that speaker. You can see on the speaker that we just took out that there's this metal ring, and that's what we're going to use to attach the speaker to the top of the case. We still have a connector issue, so what we're going to do is we're going to cut off the connector from the old speaker and the the connector from the new speaker and then we're going to solder the new speaker to the connector from the old speaker so that we can use it in the radio. This is the longest process of the entire repair, so I sped it up so that you can get the general idea without having to sit through all of it. In case you were wondering where this awesome workbench came from, it's not mine. So I just wanted to give a quick shout out to my boyfriend and his roommate for letting me use it on short notice. So you can see that now we're finally getting the end actually connected. Now that we've got the speaker with the end that we need, we can put it into the lid of the radio and then screw it down.
Definitely the hardest part of this repair was figuring out where the holes were when I had the lid flipped over and was trying to put the screws in. Since I finally got it, let's see if it works. Okay, Ohio, thank you for the two to a white top of hotel. So, I'll be honest with you guys, I didn't really think I was going to have to solder for today's video, but you know, it happens, we got it working, which is awesome. So before I go, I just wanted to make a quick announcement, and that is that I got featured on the Faux Time podcast. It's going to be released on Monday, so make sure to check it out. There'll be a link in the description. So thank you guys so much for all the support that I've been receiving and for all the comments on the previous videos. So just keep it up. Thank you so much. And until next time, 73.